Suppliers and stand builders are the lifeblood of the conferences industry. They are the people that help events come together. But what happens when a business wants to be more than the sum of its parts? What happens when a stand builder wants to be sustainable, wants to take people and planet and integrate it into their processes? We're here today at Whitespace to find out how their business operates, how they're being sustainable and how they're treating their people. What it's about now is about retaining staff, I would say, because uh, there's, it's very active, the recruitment market, so everyone's knocking on your door trying to nick your staff. So we are very keen on trying to make sure the staff are well re remunerated and also that they are, we have a good culture, that people enjoy working here and hopefully don't want to leave. So that's kind of how we try and approach it. But yes, it's tough, but there are good people out there and I think it's they're paid well and if you've got a good environment for them to work in, hopefully they'll stay with you. It's just that easy. <laughs> well, so far, it's not even. <laughs> Something that we realised very early on in white space was that typically the way that exhibitors are communicated to is, again, is very transactional. It's right, <laughs> you need to order this, this point, you can get money off here, and you're spoken to maybe three or four times during the event cycle. And we want to eliminate those barriers and make it very, very conversational. So one thing that we introduced as well is introducing QR codes on site. So that's something to really play into, right? If you're a one man stand or you don't feel comfortable coming to speak to somebody or you just don't have the time to leave your stand, you click the QR code, which is automatically on your stand. You have the option to call, speak to us through the website or WhatsApp us. If you start limiting people to just kind of one form of communication you're going to get more people that are dissatisfied because they don't want to come mm. and talk to you and tell you what's wrong because they don't really know how to like you say if it might be a language barrier it, they can't physically leave their stand because it's a one person thing by opening up the channels of communication it can only be a good thing mm. for um for mm. activities a lot of times at the moment we have um, budget issues with clients i think sometimes the budgets have been reduced slightly more than they were in previous years but the idea that we can take anything at any level because of our group now, we can start from a base level using white box as an entry level product and we can take it all the way through to the Wii product, which is more of a boutique custom build stand. Uh, anyone that comes to us, we can offer anything at any level. So it, that's really helped us in terms of being able to design creatively. And if someone hasn't got as much, we can find a good solution, which actually takes them to a great place at the show, hopefully builds the business. Next year, they come back to us a little more and we can build them up into a bigger business. Something that we've been sort of getting a lot of positive feedback on is our exhibitor webinars. Mm. So that's something that we introduced again at the beginning, purely because we presume that the exhibitor knows what they're doing and they potentially may not be. Mm. And it's a good uh, check-in point. So we typically run them probably three to two months out from the event and you'll have all the key stakeholders on the, on the call from our side. And we had one the other day and it had over 55 participants. Yeah. And that's a... Um, a platform where an exhibitor can ask questions, they can ask technical questions, we'll have technical people on the call, specifically around uh, electrical heavy shows. We like to have them just to sort of um, get those sort of hard questions out of the way and make sure the exhibitor knows what they're ordering. And again, it alleviates those pain points on site. Yeah, and even just from like a kind of like personal perspective, it's just kind of nice for them to know, like put a face to a name. I've been emailing you for the past mm -hmm. two months or whatever. Oh, it's Louis, oh, it's Eloise or whoever. Um, and then when they see us on site, it's like, you can kind of... You've got a report, have you? report there, yeah, so it's nice. Mm. And it doesn't take up that much time. The biggest thing that's making an impact on our business is the sustainability aspect of things. So because we do a modular system, reusable, it's uh, part of the sharing economy, so we can actually build exhibition stands that can go out, be built, brought back, go back on shelf, with very little waste or any sort of damage uh, or a reduction in CO2 for, for a lot of companies. So if they have a sustainability charter on their website or in their business, we want to work with them as well because we're dedicated to increasing the use of modular to decrease waste in our environment. How does a kind of DNI, DEI, diversity and inclusivity kind of factor into that because I feel like that's a big push for a lot of events companies at the moment as well. Yeah, I think it's huge actually. I think any uh, business should have that at the forefront of their recruitment is uh, diversity and inclusion because it opens up your talent pool 
Um, and it also creates a really good culture for everyone because it's more respectful. I think uh, it's more, um, I think people tend to work better in teams. Um, so I would say it's a really important aspect of any business is to have that kind of proactive recruitment process for diversity and inclusion. Uh, it's certainly working for us and it's really opened up the talent pool. A kind of the second thing I want to chat to you about is sustainability angle. We chatted a little bit about DEI, which kind of does fit under CSR. But I mean, what does sustainability mean for white space group? I mean, I mean, how does it enact sustainable processes? So sustainability is probably at the heart of everything we do. Uh, uh, we started the company in 2002 on the very much on the principle of a reusable infrastructure uh, in terms of our design and build. Uh, reusable graphics, um, reusable fabrications, uh, reusable flooring, and hired furniture. So once you've got those kind of key elements uh, all being reused, you've already probably reduced your carbon output um, compared to traditional stand production by about 60 to 70 percent. And thereafter, you're looking at how you can recycle. So having a policy to recycle carpets, um, having um, you know graphics that are fully recyclable. 100% recyclable. Those sort of uh, things are really helpful. And having a good relationship with a um, waste management company, you have to pay for these things because it doesn't come free. So it's a little bit more money, but it's good investment in terms of making sure that at the end of, you know, when things are disposed of, that they're disposed of in an environmentally conscientious way. I feel like a big challenge for a lot of stand builders and events businesses and organizers even is that they don't know where their kind of CO2 production is currently at. So, so, I mean, how do you benchmark that and how do you go, okay, this is what we want to strive for. This is where absolutely. we're currently at. Very important, yeah. So, so how do you do that? Yeah, absolutely. So carbon measurement. So we have uh, made sure that we measured our, our carbon output for last year, for example, and we can now target ourselves for this coming year to try and improve on that. Because uh, it's a constant improvement. We're not, we are in an industry that is notoriously um, carbon output heavy. So it's really important to do the best you can in terms of reducing that carbon output. Um, and having measurement is a way of doing that and also offering it to our clients as a way for them to be able to measure their carbon output and improve from their uh, aspect. Because it's all the way down the line that everyone's got to really work towards trying to improve their carbon output. I think there are, there are several areas that we're moving into more help with sustainability but also take us into a new trend which is more of more emphasis on digital so engagement using digital screens and video walls and touch screens and not touch screens as well which we found through the pandemic we generated tons of new great ideas that actually came out of covid but now applicable to to the current situation so um, we have the technology to create touch screens that don't involve actually touching anything but do create engagement and digital interaction with with clients content i think since white space group has now come into full fruition biggest change we're going to find is actually what we're doing right now is bringing everything into one system as the heart of the business so that across the five sectors we can actually bring in everyone onto one system which keeps us seamless which keeps efficiencies going which means we can keep our prices keen and the client gets a better service at the end. So we've had a great day here at White Space Group. We've learned all about innovation, how they're weaving in sustainability into everything that they do, inclusion, diversity, they've really got the lot. It's been a great and interesting day. Looking forward to see what they do next.